yes, yes. Staying. Hey, we get consistent, you know. Yes. It's, it's, it's a vibe, man. Yes, it is. <laughs> if you don't know, I am Janine, a.k.a. Many Things. If you don't know, please go find out. And this is wonderful co-host, the man behind everything OTS, Derek. <sighs> it's great to be back. Isn't it? <laughs> it's great. It's it great hasn't been a long time. It, has, <laughs> it hasn't. It's only been like a week. It's legit been seven days. It's, it's, I mean, we're 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 getting into a nice rhythm. Yeah. I, I feel it. I feel it. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. So we're gonna actually get into the this book, this wonderful book that uh, I've been obsessed over for the last what five months, maybe. This book changes lives. Apparently, Derek um, came out one day like, "Guys, I am a whole new man," and it's to this book here, David Dita. Yeah, someone to promote. Not that you need us, but yeah. you do because this guy here hey. is gonna sell this book for you because he swears by it. I, look, I'm gonna tell you what, and, and this might sound sacrilegious, but just bear with me, okay? There are two books that I believe that. Uh, Okay, let me rewind. I believe that this book is just as important as the Bible is to certain to uh, to Christians. All right, that's a pretty um, heavy statement to drop on us in the first it is. minutes. But, go but I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why though. Found yourself <laughs> <laughs> because <sighs> reading this book has helped me realize my issues with communication and. Mm. That's one of the biggest things that we have with relationships. The, one of the biggest issues that relationships have in general is either a lack of communication or a miscommunication. And this book, even though it's called The Way of the Superior Man, it's for both men and women. Yes. It allows men to understand the, the way women, women think and it allows women to understand the way men think to understand what the feminine energy is and what the masculine energy is. And to accept the fact that you have both um, in you, male or female, you, you, you tap into different yes. energies. And you yes, yes. Situation. And it's, um, it's funny how we try to suppress that. Mm -hmm. Like it's something that, that is a, uh, what's the way, white way to say it? We almost act like it's something but that's really bad. The white or the right way? I, I, to be completely honest, I, I didn't say white. I, I, I mean, both, both, I don't, both I, have I, apply here. I just want to know which one you meant. <laughs> they both apply. Just want to know. And look, <laughs> I didn't say white. I can tell you that. Okay, the right <laughs> way. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. But yeah, no, it's, 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 it's almost like we, we just feel like, the, like it's, it's wrong to be, to, to have the feminine energy if you're a man or to have the masculine energy if you're a woman. Yeah, you need you kind of need both. Like it's just that one is you operate in one more than you do the other. Yeah, that's pretty much it. For sure. You know? So I don't know how you found out about the book, but I found out about it through uh, Nipsey Hussle's Breakfast Club interview where he Same said one. Lauren London gave it to him, and I just yeah. think that that speaks to. I can go on a tangent about their love and how amazing it was and how aspiring it is but yeah he said as a woman you have to be very secure in yourself to give this book to your man because it ultimately taps into a different part of y'all that I think you try to not tap into like it forces yeah. you to to do it and yeah. um he wasn't lying because the first chapter I was like you got me and my man <laughs> okay I, I felt triggered I was like you know what <laughs> this is not for the weak minded like like it's not. it really has to be for if you're in a place of like really wanting to grow mm -hmm. and to understand your partner and not take them like surface level if that makes sense right right so um yeah i i figure uh since it is a good book for both men and women this is venus and mars it's going to be interesting to dissect it and, and get our point of views on each chapter 
I don't think we're going to go chapter by chapter necessarily, but just kind of flip through or, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, I actually found out about this book the same way. Um, cause I watched, I watched that interview. That interview came out. I, I want to say that was like a little over three years ago now. Mm -hmm. Um, I watched it. I bought it the day I watched the interview, right? I accidentally bought two copies and I have a friend of mine who's going through a lot of stuff, especially with, uh, the woman that he was dating at the time. And I actually gave him a copy of the book. I never read the book. I hadn't, I, I, I think my, my copy was collecting dust. Mm -hmm. Um, I tend to do that with, with books sometimes, <laughs> but I gave it to him. And then I started seeing, like, I think over the course of like the next year, things start to switch for him. Mm. He was, there was a lot of issues that he was having with her and just, just personal uh, uh, issues as well. And I think within a year after we spoke again, and then it's like things just kind of, he just like flipped the switch. I'm like, what, how did that happen? And beginning of this year, for some reason, I just had this urge to read a book. It had nothing to do with the New Year's resolution type thing. Had like none of that stuff. I just had this urge to read. And I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and crack this book open. Not to say the book finds you when needed, because like you should you should definitely go buy it so that you have access yeah. to it. But it's definitely a book that um you'll speak when you're really at a place of like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do the work. You know when I mean? you're willing to look at yourself in the mirror and actually work on the things that need to be worked on, this is definitely the book you read in that moment. And to be completely honest, I think this is a book that you actually read multiple times because I don't think this is a mm -hmm. book you read one time and then that's just, that's just it. I yeah. think that's why I, I say it's, it's just as important as the Bible to me mm -hmm. because you like I know for sure moving forward you know <laughs> get married have kids all that stuff like when those things happen for me I'm going to go back to to this book and reference a lot of things yeah. yeah because I we evolve over time yes and and there's going to be certain things that I'm going to definitely have a, have a need to <laughs> break down again uh, in those moments. And this is a book that I, I will most definitely keep on hand. So I'm, I can honestly say this book changed my life. I can honestly say that. Before we started recording, we were having a conversation about um, not giving a fuck anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like the book help, helped you further not really care about people's opinion of you or you had already gotten there? This just reaffirmed it. Reaffirmed your gotcha. Yes. I, cause I really don't care. I like, <laughs> I don't care. I, like I respect what people think. And to be honest, it's not that I don't care what, what people think in general. I don't care what a lot of people think. I care about what my close circle of people think that's what i care about but i don't allow it to yes okay dictate what my every move is yeah. like you have to have those people to be around you to uh to help you work through things but at the end of the day yes. yeah exactly yeah but at the end of the day it's your life like it's your decision what like mm -hmm. what you're going to do is that that's 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 your choice and I know it took me a, a long time to actually get to that point because I actually relied on, on my parents a lot uh, uh, through my teenage years and early 20s of like what I should do, this, that, and the other. And I, yeah, it's, I think I, I broke away from that by like 25, I would say. 25 is the year when you're yeah. like, I, I got to make some changes. I agree with you. I don't care about what a lot of people think, people within my close circle. Like I, I'm still going to do me. Like I'm very much of a person of like, if I have my mind made up about it, I'm going to do it. It would just mm -hmm. be nice if you supported it as well. You don't have to, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. 
Yeah. But it would be nice if you did it. And um, I think I spoke, spoke, spoke to you about this too. I'm very family oriented and not that I would code switch around my family, but I might um, tone down certain elements of me because I didn't want them to feel mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. But then older, like at this point in my life, when I just genuinely be mean, I'm like, we are getting beer towers and I'm making drinks when I come over there. My family is with it. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. all the time I was trying to be this person when y'all was with the shits anyway, oh, mm-hmm. we could have been doing this. Yeah, but then I also yeah. think because I'm grown now, like I'm grown, grown, it's okay for them to be like that with me now. Yeah. Do you feel like you do that in relationships too, like with your significant other, like in general, not just you? I'm just saying, like, do you think that people tend to do yeah. that a lot? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Like, especially if you're new in a relationship, you're definitely giving the best rep- representative of yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're uber hyper um aware and considerate of the other person's feelings but then you get to a point where like that gets tiring after a while and it's like this is who i am raw and uncut and we just Mm -hmm. have to work through it how long did it take for you and jude to break through that portion 12 years i'm just joking um (laughs) (laughs) i for me um, I think we've always been ourselves, like it's, it's never been putting on this face for each other, mm-hmm. but I think we are just now getting to a point, or me personally, I'm getting to a point where I'm learning to be comfortable and confident in expressing myself if there's something that I don't like without the fear of feeling like um, it's going to cause conflict. Because yeah. it just I feel like that there's this negative connotation over, over conflict, but it doesn't have to be. We cannot agree about something. Yeah. We can go back and forth about it. We don't have to see it the same yeah. way at the end. I just have to be okay with that time period where it's kind of rocky. Like um, we talked about this last episode, I think, to where you think like your relationship is supposed to be perfect and on this peak the whole time. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, because that's my the re and the re and I didn't go into this last week, but I'll go ahead and say it now. The reason why I thought that as a as a kid is because that's what I saw around me growing up in the church. Mm-hmm. It's this expectation of perfection, and like I saw that from everyone that I was around, and I never got a chance to see the the minutiae of a relationship growing up it was always the word (laughs) i'm gonna try to throw something in there every once in a while (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah it's it's just it's it sucks because like thinking of those highlights all the time like like that's what what i was seeing when i got into relationships I'm like, yo, why is it this? Why is it made? Okay, it's not like this because it's not the one I'm supposed to be with. And then we would end it, like, you know, and and, and that sucks. <laughs> I had both. I, I had both. I had an example of a marriage where they were legit best friends. They were business partners. Mm. Um, were to together all day during work, after work. Um, when there was an argument, it was never really an argument. It was more of like a conversation, mm-hmm. like this intellectual debate. I was like, ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that yeah. Then I called my parents, which God b- bless them, I would not have it any other way. They were together and got together and started a family very young. So it was a lot of things that they were working through. So it was like, I saw a lot of the conflict Again, mm-hmm. I use the word conflict loosely because I don't want it to be a negative. And yeah. so when I got into my marriage, I was like, I don't want to ever argue. And I don't want my kid to ever see us argue. And it has to be yeah. perfect all the time. And the truth of the matter is, is that it's not. It's and not. I'm somebody who operates like I'm either on or off. It's either black or white. Yeah. And being in a gray area is very uncomfortable for me. So yeah. the first it's like giving up. I'm like, we just gotta fix it. We don't, and we don't have to address it ever again. Which for sure, is good. 
and I think it's healthy for for kids to see um, parents not agreeing. Like, I think you can get into arguments, but like actually listen to the other person's point of view because we don't we don't a lot of times we don't listen to to understand we listen to respond and that's the problem and especially as men like that's that's a huge thing huge thing i know especially in my last my last relationship (laughs) your boy was your boy was wild i I, yeah yeah Your boy was wild. I I would literally do that. I would literally sit there and, and let her speak, and I'm just like, oh, like wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Negative. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's one of those things. Like I just I don't I don't understand why we do that. But it's like this innate thing, like for us to to only argue and and try to get our points across not understanding the other point of view and i know for me when when it comes to arguing like that's something like i need i need the resolution i like i can't we can't sit here have the argument and then go our separate ways yeah this needs to be done tonight yeah Um, i need the resolve i need the resolve i think what i learned even in a recent argument is i feel like I have to make sure that you understand my side. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's not the time for it to be about me. And I had to mm-hmm. learn that because I was apologizing for something. I was like, but he was like, see, I knew you was going to say, but for yeah. persons, you just apologizing, you yeah. saying, but you're still trying to validate what you were saying. He didn't say that, but mm-hmm. also like you're, you're trying to validate what your side is. I was like, right yeah. again yeah <laughs> you know when you're right you're right i should have just apologized and saved the butt for li- later on <laughs> yeah yeah i because like i know to be completely honest i don't i can't really recall seeing my parents argue i i i definitely i've I definitely witnessed a lot of uncomfortable moments yeah, like you could feel the like tension in the room. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I felt I felt that a lot, but I never heard or saw the disputes. So, you know, and 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 not it's not a knock against my parents. I think I think gen- previous generations look at that differently. You like especially like my mom is Jamaican, right? So, you know how island how islanders are, where you want to kind of like keep everything in you don't want a lot of that stuff to get out so i think that was a lot of that a lot of that had played a part into it um but i think it's healthy for kids to see the back and forth respectfully but the back and forth because i know that would have helped me in my relationships to understand ah okay so this is what i do in this moment i think it's important because even though i still have my parents on this pedestal and they're superheroes Mm -hmm. I think seeing the character flaws growing up made me um, maybe relate to them a little bit more or or when I come to them for advice, like I genuinely take it in because like I see that you have emotions too and that you're human and that you probably feeling where I'm coming from on this, Mm -hmm. you know, versus feeling like you're coming to this like picture perfect image of what an adult is. Mm-hmm. And there's already this like feeling of I'm going to be judged or you're not going to really give me the real, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and that's something that I know when I have kids, that's going to be something that I, I, I display how yeah. to properly go through this, the dispute without demeaning your partner. Like I, I I would love to 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 show them that because I, there's there's something that about that that um to be completely honest I think if we if if most of us in our generation or previous generations saw that growing up I would I would venture to say that the amount of divorce rate, the, the, the rate of divorce 
probably wouldn't be as high. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure it'd still be high, but the we don't know how to we don't know how to resolve conflict. It's no just tolerance for yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I, like that's that's unhealthy. So I know for me, you know, I know that's far off from what we would actually get into with the book, but um, that's some that's definitely something I want to be able to to portray as as a father. And not to speak for Mars on this, but I yeah. think as men, that's important too, because I think um, our generation grew up with this um, image of what a man is to just kind of just do and work and provide and um, to have emotions or feelings or to be expressive on those things was somehow soft, which we talked about oh, yeah. last week too, we're kind of circling back. Yeah. But um, if you're like displaying the fact that no, we we can communicate properly, but I'm still the man of this house, though. You know what I mean? I think that mm -hmm. that's a good um, image to give to your kids. Yeah, because it's it. What I what I wouldn't want to to um, I guess display is like there's a hierarchy type of of thing. Yeah, like a tyranny. Yeah, like like I am above all, and no one can tell me anything. That yeah, that I that's not even me as a person. So me doing it as a husband or father is way off. <laughs> We're gonna that's talk about uh, being submissive in a re relationship too at some point. Not we to, need to. That's gonna be a whole three hour conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> submissive. What does that mean exactly? But um, yeah. yeah. We're gonna talk about that one day. Yeah, we gotta get into that. So, you read the first chapter, right? Yeah, because um, shout out to the what I think about this week book, book, book club powered by OTS. But I've been on this other book that I'm trying to finish um <laughs> by next Saturday. I'm on track oh, yeah. though. Um, but when I got to this, I was like, oh, this one chapter had me pondering enough to where we can wait on these other ones. <laughs> So what, what were your first thoughts? Well, I, I would like to read from the good book. Yes. We don't have to, <laughs> we don't have to uh, read the whole thing. So each chapter, I, I like books like this because the chapters are like two to three pages, a quick read. Um, Made me feel so, like I was doing something. Yeah, it makes you feel like you're doing something. You, you're actually making progress mm -hmm. with the book chapter kind of starts with I don't know like a little okay Mike like a little summary so much of what the whole thing is going to be talking about right right right, right. So chapter one start oh I'm on chapter two just kidding okay <laughs> um it's titled stop hoping for a completion of anything in life most men make the error of thinking that one day it will be done they think if I can work enough then one day I could rest or one day my woman will understand something and then she will stop complaining or I'm only doing this now so that one day I can do what I really want with my life the masculine error is to think that eventually things will be different in some fundamental way they won't it never ends as long as life continues the creative challenge is to tussle play and make love with the present moment while giving your unique gift Make love at the present moment. You better put those words together, hey. David. Hey. <laughs> so just based off of that small pa passage in the beginning, what are your thoughts? What are your feelings? Oh, no, I need I need your thoughts first. I was like, oh, um, I'm so guilty of this. And my friend actually called me out on this. I do feel like once I complete something, like that's it. And I get comfortable for, mm -hmm. for a moment. Like, okay, I did that. I'm accomplished. But the truth of the matter is, is that your evolution and your growth and your success is the constant need to keep going and to reach more goals. Like mm -hmm. it, it's never supposed to end. And once it does end, you become complacent and that's not good. Yeah. 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 I, I, um, I'm a perfectionist. So especially with, within my work, like that's why I like, 
that's why I said like with arguments, I need resolution because I need that 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 satisfaction of completion. Yeah, I I definitely need that, but I don't know. I think with this, it I didn't realize I was even like this to be completely honest. Um, I think it was just it's it's one of those things where I was looking at myself, just thinking like, okay, like I need to check off these boxes with what I'm doing and and just that's just how I am you know like like um which that statement I realized was an issue too <laughs> the fact that I you am. have boxes huh the fact that you have boxes or like a checklist no that just that statement of that's how I am <sighs> mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I I probably said that that's a cop out it's it is i said that countless times it's such a cop out i i it is it is and but it, and, and it deflects responsibility of action yeah. it does and it's like you're right there are some things that are just innately this is who i am like okay cool but if I'm not trying to change your religion or spiritual beliefs, if I'm not trying to pull you away from family, if, if, if what I'm trying to get you to evolve in is just like communication is what we started this with. If I'm just trying mm -hmm. to find a way for us to grow and to communicate better, you saying, oh, well, this is just the way I am. That's a cop out and, and, and it's you being lazy and not wanting to do the work for us to grow in that area of our relationship. Right. And do women say this? Do women, do women use that, use that phrase or is it just men? This is who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do it in the same way y'all do. Like when, when we don't want to take accountability for something, oh, well, that's just the way I am. And you knew who I was before you got with me. So yeah. 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 You know, so yeah, we, we definitely do it too. Cause I've never been in a relationship uh, where a woman has said that. She don't say it, but that's the energy. Like I'm sure well, I don't know if I'm sure, but I know that there's been situations where I'm called out on, on something. I'm like, why is this a surprise? Like, I always do this. Or, why are you acting like this is new? And then yeah, in yeah, retrospect, yeah. I'm like, okay, you were just calling me out on my bullshit and I don't like to be called out on it. That's yeah. all that is. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I know that was another tangent, but like, I, that's just... That's something else I realized. Mars, baby, we don't have tangents on tangents. Yeah. <laughs> but that's something I realized as well that I needed. Uh, I'm not even sure if I realized that with this book or not. I think that may have just been uh, just with the process of realizing what I need to work on. Um, but uh, what what were some things? Let me see. What should I, how should I say this? What was something that you felt specifically attacked about with this chapter because you text me a couple of times <laughs> when homeboy said i should probably highlight these these parts to put little um little stickies but he was basically like here it is here it is here it is here it is it says in addition to the myth that one day your life will be fundamentally different you may believe and hope that one day your woman will be fundamentally different don't wait it's going to be how however she is forever if your woman's behavior or mood is truly intolerable to you you should leave her and don't look back since <laughs> you cannot change her however if you find her her behavior or mood is merely distasteful or half surprised that she will always seem this way the feminine always seems chaotic and complicated from the perspective of the masculine that's like, oh, David, you got me and my man messed up because you telling him that he should just leave and never look back because he don't rock with something that I do. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. But that's why <laughs> when Nipsey <laughs> said you have to be very secure mm -hmm. when giving your, your partner this book, that's one of the things like 
I just don't want somebody to take this and think, oh, just because, you know, I don't like something simple that I'm just supposed to leave because that leads to the divorce rate or the breakup rate you were talking about. of like not even yep. wanting to work through anything. I'm just done. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that I think if anyone is processing it as a simple thing, they were they were looking for a way to get out anyway. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, Another yeah, because I think this is something that um, is more so like you've done everything you you could to stay and and work on on whatever it was, and it's just nothing is changing at that moment go ahead but i i do agree that that the feminine energy is chaotic and com- and complicated like it, because you and see hold up i don't want i don't want to get <laughs> just I'm interested in what your definition of chaotic feminine energy is so in okay so as men we just go straight to the point of the matter That's- mm-hmm women like to go all the way around and and go to different things to get to the point it's like like think think about think about with shopping right we can go straight to like if i need to go get a box of pasta i can literally go walk right into target i know which aisle i need to go down to get the pasta and i walk to the to the register and i'm out i'm out within like five minutes depending on the line (laughs) <laughs> what is the um y'all are uh not narrow-minded but y'all are very much one lane this is the goal this is a tunnel vision object, tunnel vision i'm here to get stuff for the spaghetti tonight yes spaghetti tonight only yes women you're right I, I feel like our brains are chaotic because we have a million and one things we are juggling at any given time of our jobs, we have our friendships, we have our relationships, we have to take care of the house. Like mm-hmm. we, we have to consider all of these different things all the time. So when I go to the grocery store, I'm thinking about dinner tonight, but I'm also thinking about what if we want snacks or what if we don't wanna eat le- leftovers tomorrow or damn, those cookies look really bomb. It would have them just in case, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to us telling y'all stories too like the devil is is in the details i need you to know what shorty did last week so that you can understand why i'm mad about it this week that is the <laughs> <laughs> i need you to understand because that's and that's that's it's so hilarious because i know like when i've told stories about stuff at work it's literally been like five minutes like like I can I could tell a story and I can get right to the meat of the, of the of the matter and I'll be good. Like if it's me just telling the story, I can get right there to it. You know, I, I'm I'm long winded, but I can get I can get right there. I've been I've been on the phone where it's been <laughs> we've been sitting there talking about this. Yeah, like I mean and I forgot what the initial thing was about. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know but what I'm saying? The was hot and you had to know all of it. <laughs> every single thing. Every single thing. It's it's hilarious how it happens, honestly. Like uh I'm not mad at it. I just I think that this is why it's it's important for us to understand how both sides work because the more you understand, the less um the less you're gonna sit and try to change. Mm-hmm. You're gonna waste a lot of energy trying to change the feminine energy as a man. You're gonna mm-hmm. waste a lot of energy trying mm-hmm. to change the masculine energy as a woman. Yes. It's, it's it's hard to do. That like it's it's just a moot point. So that's why I say that I think this this book is important because it dives it really dives deep into the masculine and feminine energy. Um, but yeah, you women women are complicated. You all are. I agree. We're both yeah. of those things. Yeah. But but it's not a knock. It's not, it's not a knock. It wouldn't like, be fun if 
if we weren't this way. <laughs> right. But see, I think that that's also why like opposites opposites attract. But see, yeah. here's the thing. Like, this is it's also true for f- uh, a, a male female relationship if the 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 woman uh, operates in the masculine energy and the the man will uh, operates in the female energy uh, or feminine energy and it's just about the opposites attracting to be completely honest like i i don't think there's an issue with it i think having that balance is great um because to be to be completely honest I think I would be bored if I was with someone that was exactly like me. I think, I like, want that, bro. no, no, nah, like I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, we, we, like, we have a lot of things in common, but we're not gonna be the same person. Yeah, we're not gonna think the same. We're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna operate the same. We're not gonna move the same. It's just having that understanding of what's what, and you know, I, I think that's why I think, how you know, what's so funny. I was so foolish childish and naive to believe at 24 25 i had women figured out i oh. i said this out loud i get women i get women i i, I get y'all y- y'all not a mystery to me anymore i was so stupid <laughs> and, and then like it depends like you you might have us figured out on like a surface level like if if we're friends you have us figured out like you know okay if she's giving me this vibe I know to kind of step away or she might be going through something but but when you're in the trenches with your woman it's completely different yeah <laughs> it's yeah. completely different There's a lot of other things you have to consider and understand and unpack and those are the things I was not willing to do early on yeah and then also too, like not to not people in young people in serious relationships because I was that person Mm -hmm. but at 20 20 20 to 25 like you you think you're grown and like you have it figured out you really don't at all I cannot (laughs) begin to tell you how many times I legit walked with that cocky smug attitude as if I knew everything like you couldn't tell me anything anything and i'm being completely honest i don't know that it truly like okay so there are certain circumstances especially like like yours for example where you meet your significant other early on and you guys you it just it just works i don't know how much sense it makes for the majority to do that it's really rare it's really rare and i think some people um i don't know if i want to say specifically women because i've had guy would not me personally but i've seen interviews with guys that feel this way too where your dream is to have like a high school sweetheart and like grow up together and have a Mm -hmm. family and things like that but the likeliness of finding your soulmate if those really even exist um at 18 19 in the same community you grew up in i don't know probably Hmm. not probably not gonna happen it's not likely like and i didn't start full discretion i didn't start dating uh, until i was 20 like i didn't go on my first date until 20 um a lot of people haven't yeah thought you were dating but like you stand up on the phone talking and texting back and forth is not you dating somebody yeah yeah no but i didn't get into my first relationship until i was like 21 and i like i'm actually glad i waited as long as i did because a lot of the things that i thought i knew at that time i didn't know i I wasn't even close to touching the surface 31 I'm not close to touching the surface of knowing you know like and I and I think that comes up about with the humbling process like like going through life and understanding yo I don't know it I I'm I'm good I'm good but it's like like I said I said like this like I think I said this last week where I had to get to that, that point where I had to basically put my ego and pride on a leash 
and actually learn how to control it um because back then like yeah again i like, you couldn't tell me anything i knew i knew everything that was needed that needed to know about women and 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 life like i i, I thought i had life figured out you know and it's just it's funny because y- your brain doesn't even fully develop until 25 so like the I'm nervous the, to think <laughs> the, yeah yeah <laughs> but like not only that but to actually think that that uh you know what it takes to be in a relationship like mm-hmm. you know what it takes to have a a, a healthy relationship uh healthy communication um all that like i'm at 31 i'm just getting to that point where i'm understanding that i have a tangent but it's not quite um i don't know how to say it nicely so i'm gonna or clearly so i'm gonna try to do it do you feel like as men y'all Okay, I'll just say it the way I feel. I feel like as men, y'all think we are stronger than what we really are. And I don't like the way I'm saying it because like we are strong. Mm -hmm. But I say in a sense of like, we very easily have a mentality, at least from how I grew up. We very easily have a fuck it, I got it or fuck it, I'll do it type of energy. Like Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just handle it. So the norm is you seeing us taking on everything at once and kind of doing it without complaining, Mm -hmm. but you're not really considering the fact of like, we really do have a lot going on. And when something may fall on the wayside, or we may not do something in a way that y'all feel like we could do it, there's no consideration of the fact that I was juggling a million other things also. Does that make sense? Most definitely. I think we, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that I'm speaking for every man, but I think the majority of us can fall into this mindset of thinking that our woman is strong enough to always take on our, our issues, Mm -hmm. you know, and to be completely honest, I do believe that, uh, I do believe women are stronger than men. Uh, but it's not to say that that's, that means that you take my, all my stuff, right? Like, I think we're strong. I think women are stronger than men in certain things. And I think men are stronger than women in certain things. Like it's a, again, it's a, it's a, it's a balance, yeah. but women have, a certain level of strength i think mentally that we don't tend to develop for a long time you all like you all mature and develop a lot faster than we do um so i think like i think where 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 we mature across our 20s and 30s like toward the tail end of our twenties and thirties, you all are there like five years prior, <laughs> three to five years prior. You're already there, you know. So I don't know. I think that um, I think we inadvertently put our our baggage onto you. I think we inadvertently put our 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 issues onto women. Uh, thinking that they'll be able to just handle it and and it's not fair it's not fair i know i definitely did that (laughs) i i am like i'm speaking when i'm speaking about stuff like this is i've done it just you know just just assume i've done it because it's um it's something that i know that that moving forward i'm not going to be you know i'm not going to operate from that perspective but i didn't take I didn't take her into consideration in terms of is she even able to handle this right now? Like, what is it about that? What is it that I'm working through that I can work through by myself? 
And then I can come to her and ask, hey, could you help me with this and the other to help me get through this, right? Like, we should be able to ask our partner, whether we're talking, you know, from a male perspective or a female perspective, we should be able to ask our partner for help. But just throwing it on them, you know, like, like, from the jump and expect them to understand, like, be able to hold all this weight. Like you said, women, you all juggle so much. Like, it's like, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like while you're juggling, we're throwing like three more. I'm doing hula hoop more with my foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and so that's unfair. That's unfair. And then to expect you to keep the same pace. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's, that's, that's where, like, I know for me, I, I messed up a lot. Um, especially over the last few years of thinking that that was something that was okay. Um, and I, I can't place that blame on anyone else but myself. Right. But there's like, we as men have to come to that place of understanding of knowing like, okay, let me, let me do what I need to do before you know, just throwing this on, you know, there's some stuff that you, you you probably can't avoid, but for the most part, it should be a process of just easing them into whatever, instead of just throwing three books and, 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 and a water bottle at them and expecting, yeah, yeah just, it just, it and doesn't I work. I want to be careful with that. Cause like you're saying, like, I have to know whether or not I can, give her this burden of mine right because mm -hmm. you probably can't handle it because you handle everything else and most times we do want to be a part of your growth or your journey but i think what happens is that y'all um y'all use one thing kind of as a scapegoat to then allow your stress and frustrations and insecurities about other things to now suddenly come out about this other thing and then it's overwhelming yeah yeah, yeah. You know what i'm saying yeah. like um yeah no, so I, agree with that. I wanted to be like don't talk to your because it comes back to the first chapter of like your growth and your journey and 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 is is never going to be done. You're going to always be working on it. So don't ever feel like I'm not going to bring this to her and until I have it figured out because you're not going to have it figured out. It's going to be no. a constant. Yeah, no, and I agree with that. I'm just like, I think there's a way to go about it. That's that's what I mean. I think there's a way to go about it where we can present it to you properly without just throwing it at your lap and and expecting you to to get it done or like there's a mess on my lap and i have to fix it now okay cool. yeah yeah, means like yeah. You walked off and allowed me to have to clean up the mess <laughs> right right yeah. <laughs> right yeah that that's that's what i mean um because i like i know i did that I, i'm guilty of that for sure just popping up with an issue and just say hey yeah this is what it is i'm trying to figure this out this out and yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i know that's that's something that uh we do a lot but yeah that, that's that's what i mean that's what i mean just just having an actual process of going through it without basically like what i was saying last week where you know we both come into a relationship with baggage from the jump yeah. and just allowing our partner to help us unpack that baggage like it's a process of it you know it's not just hey i'm throwing the, the you know my carry on and, and my check ins to you and 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 yeah do 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 the laundry and Put it out for me. I'll be, yeah I'll be back. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's just a process of how we do that that uh, I think uh, uh, should be taken into consideration when we're actually talking about how this thing goes. I agree. Yeah, that's so funny. Like we're basically saying the same thing, but I'm going around it in a different way, just like I'm on the way. Very much being with the mice, <laughs> but we're saying the exact same thing. Same exact thing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but see, that's 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 part of what he's talking about. It's the, yeah. the, the, the feminine energy is just that's except the fact that she's gonna go over here, over there, down, and that's ultimately say you were right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just needed you to follow me along this trail i i took this scenic route that's that's all it was 
he had your, your convertible roof down and yeah, you know, you some shades on. on. Yeah, yeah just the rooms on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So, um, has Jude read this with you? Not with me. That was what was supposed to happen, but mm -hmm. um. He's been reading it independently. My first time picking it up for real was, um, no, 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 no. I tried to start re reading it, but then I started the book club and then I started reading some other things. There was another um, line in here also that really spoke to me. Um, okay. And I had it up on my vision board when I first picked up the book months ago. Oh, wow. But um, it says, uh, just ultimately, every moment waited is a moment wasted, and each wasted moment degrades your clarity of purpose. And that was basically the summary after he was saying, like, there's not a perfect time to start whatever you feel like you want to start. Like, if there is a passion of yours or, or something that you want to do, just dedicate an, an, an hour a day to it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just yeah. start dedicating time to it every day and 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 brick by brick you're going to start building this thing mm -hmm. and so every moment wasted is legit but you know i think what also helps that process is having a partner that supports you in that mm -hmm. process you know because I, I know for me like with just like let's take ots as for example right i was Everything that we're doing with OTS was stuff that I was wanting to do. I had, you know, I had a previous company, uh, Glitch Media, um, and I was working with a, a different uh, company, media company, Track Stars, uh, here in Atlanta. Uh, and I was actually trying to put OTS under their company, their Christian hip hop uh, uh, radio station. Then oh, I, they would be like, she, she can't be on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that mouth, that hookah every episode. Uh-uh. Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not gonna rock with a lot of stuff that we do. I mean, they 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 support us, but they're not, they're not, they're not doing this. Um, but yeah, the moment I walked away from Track Stars, I remember specifically that was one thing that she, that she did, uh, supported me in starting OTS. Like I, I, the I remember the day that it happened. She was like, "Hey, just start your own thing. You've yeah. been wanting to do it anyway. Just start your own. Do the podcast, you know, the way, way you want to do it." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. I, that's, I that's, I've been I wanting to do it. Yeah, <laughs> so I went ahead and started it. You know, and and." and I think that having, like I said, that support uh, through that process is 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 key because you can you can get started on doing it right, but there's going to be some times where you actually feel um, what's the right word? I guess discouraged with the process of whatever you're working on, and and giving that. You know, like you said, like you know, hour a day of, of doing it. I was I was putting in multiple hours a day of, of of plugging away at OTS, you know, and and trying to work on everything and 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 build it up. And yeah, I mean, without the support, I don't know how. I don't know how I would have been able to actually, you know, get it past the point where uh, I where it was stagnant. And because I mean, I, I launched OTS in October 2018. Um, and I think from October, maybe it was maybe it was around a year exactly. It was hard for me to get anything going. Like we didn't even have a podcast actually going at that moment we it was one we were just starting to think and talk about but nothing was actually going i was just just getting into the groove of doing the news updates and stuff like that right but i can't even say how many times i was sitting i was just like man this isn't going the way i wanted to do she's like mm -hmm. just keep going mm -hmm. keep going
you know, and it's, it's a process. It, it is a process because you do get down on yourself a lot. And then by that time, I, that's when I met Dwayne. And, and well, I, I met Dwayne prior to that. I shouldn't say that. I met Dwayne probably in 17, 17 or 18. Because y'all met through track stars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he and I started having a, a couple of conversations um, about him joining and just, you know, helping him. And I, I'm I'm the type of person I, I I don't know how um I don't know why people would want to help me. <laughs> like out of here. Yeah, I do look at people sideways sometimes, but I, like it's like why I because I, I don't have like at that moment, especially in that moment, I didn't have anything that was you know big to work off of. It was just like he just wanted an opportunity to do it. I knew how to record. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> what it was, you know. But without that, that again, without that, that push, that steady push, that 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 you know, that help. I don't know. I don't know. And I, I think that's where we we. Um, that's why we ultimately end up putting so much on you all. I want to make a point and then we can wrap it up because we're going to yeah. be on the couch for th- five hours. Go ahead. <laughs> um, like you said, like she was the, like the one that sparked the, 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 the flame of just do it. And then was giving you that steady push. I think what happens a lot, and not just for um, men with their women, but just with your partner in general, like, because that's what the norm is you almost start to expect it so you don't appreciate it as much you know what i mean and then it's like a retrospect you're like fuck like if 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 i didn't have you here none of this would have really even popped off or 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 i wouldn't have gotten to this point in whatever aspect we're talking about yeah so i would definitely (laughs) um urge everyone to like don't take for granted the things that your partner is doing just because that's what becomes the norm because they don't have to do it at all at all you didn't care yeah at all yeah and 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 return the favor you know like push them through especially when when they're not if you see them uh uh kind of being stagnant with it and and not just just not doing anything like yo like hey you put some money into this yeah let's go <laughs> leaders and um a support system for each other it shouldn't just yeah. be one going and the other person just on the sidelines aiding to that one dream like we we could both get it but that's yeah. why a lot of relationships fail because it seems to be a one-sided affair mm-hmm you know that that's that's why I think that it's 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 so important for us to understand what the feminine and and masculine energies are and how communication goes because the woman is, and this is where this house most likely happens most of the times is is where the man's dreams and aspir- aspirations are the things that are um, taken into consideration but the woman you know will put hers on a back burner so mm-hmm. to speak to help push his dream forward and then once it's there it's like you know hey i want to i want to start doing this well nope. uh, like yo we, we, over here, right? we have I something so both. good yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think that I, I completely agree like it's gotta be a both side it gotta be both ways it's just like respect respect is is is, is a two two two-way street Amen. Communication, two-way street. There's, there's no other way to say it. Well, I, for one, am super excited to talk more. We literally, y'all, the chapter was, what, two pages? Two, maybe three pages, and we've been talking for, like, an hour. Yeah. So <laughs> just imagine where your mind could wander and drift and, 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 and go. So, especially <laughs> in the next couple of chapters. There's a lot to get into with, with these other chapters. And we going to talk yeah <laughs> so tell everybody well, where they can find you <laughs> um me on um instagram at nina soul to eyes and nina um link in my bio that's so cool. i hate that 
but it's true. Link in my bio. That's um, where it is. With every other link. <laughs> with everything else. <laughs> That's exactly where it is, right there in the bio. Like right in the bio. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can follow me at Derek underscore OTS, D E R R I C K, black way to spell it. Uh, more so, just follow the OTS page at OTS Guys, every platform uh social media uh and and um also website is ocsguys.com uh go in there check everything out we have a we have a lot of stuff that's coming um i think i'm going to start posting some updates on some things on there i'm still trying to figure out how i want to do it but you know you can go in there you can see the latest episodes of what we've posted uh latest articles and and uh see the coming uh shows that we have uh uh coming to the brand um, so I'm actually about to record one, I think, this weekend. That's okay, cool. let's let's get it. And yeah. um, definitely make sure you all subscribe to the YouTube page as well. I don't know uh, if you're listening. Definitely follow the OTS Guys page. W- what is the official? Um, is it OTS Guys? It, yeah, it's YouTube.com forward slash OTS Guys. Cool. Yeah. Um, and guys is used loosely because I'm obviously a woman and I'm part of the. <sighs> And you know um, what? <laughs> but it's fine. I don't, you know, there's, I'm not one. <laughs> it's a whole story why I chose that. And I'll tell you later. But <laughs> it's not, everything else was taken. Everything else was taken. That's <laughs> basically what it was. Guys was just filler. <laughs> and just know, um, this is a group that supports women. Oh, um, wholeheartedly. <laughs> believe women should do whatever they want to do and um yeah so don't 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 be straight away by the fact that it's ots guys there's stuff here for obviously Um, (laughs) but yeah this is great until until next week until next week yes (laughs) (laughs) all right see y'all later bye y'all